All right, I'm continuing my book of Psalms. This is book four. I mean, this is my fourth video on the book of Psalms. I'm going to skip to Psalm 49. I'm going to try to get through the book of Psalms. It's very long, but it's so important. I feel bad even skipping one, but I can't make one video on every single Psalm. It will take years. Anyway, so I'm doing every book of the Bible again. If you are interested in that, please go to my playlist and go through every, and I go through, I'm slowly getting to every book of the Bible. All right. <clears throat> uh, Psalm 49. I want to talk about Psalm 49. Uh, earthly riches will not, will not last. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to part six. Uh, they that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. None of them can be, can be by any means redeem his brother or give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of their soul is precious and ceases forever. He that he should live forever and not see corruption, for he has, for he hath, for he seeth that wise men die. Likewise, the full brutish person perish, and leave their wealth to others. The inward thought is that their own houses shall continue forever, and their dwelling places, and their dwelling places places to all generations they call their lands after their own names all right so this is talking about how earthly riches don't last but this is very important this is not just talking about money all right this is talking about being wealthy in uh, fame right uh this is about being trying to be famous call their lands after their own names all right that's what kind of happened at the tower of babel with nimrod they wanted to be well known so they built a big tower that's what it says right it is kind of like we're going to be really famous everyone was everyone's going to know our name all right this is uh what being wealthy in um you know if you have a bunch of degrees like i i'm very rich in knowledge right i'm very rich in knowledge i know a lot of math i know a lot of this and that um this is being rich in good looks, okay, or good looks. Um, none of that is that without God and his redemption, that is never going to last. And people, and the sad thing is, you know when you die, you can't take that stuff with you. But you, it's still not clicking for most people that there is an afterlife. And you know you can't take the stuff with you, but you still spend your life just doing those things. And obtaining that goal of making more money getting the job promotion climbing that tower of babel climbing that ladder right i gotta be a manager i gotta be a little ruler over a little group of people just and bigger and better and then i'm you know i'm gonna get to the top all right and their houses shall continue forever. You are spending your life. If th if this is sad. I'm going to make another video about this. It really points this out. The very thing that you are working towards is usually the very thing you will get punished for it when you perish. All right. You think these things are getting you to somewhere good. And they're actually usually the things that are digging you further down into the pit. All right. If you are stepping all over people for a job promotion, you have to pay for that. All right. Um, this is also talking about money. Yes, being wealthy is very dangerous. Okay, even if you are born into a uh, a wealthy family, right? Oh, God bless God blessed you for with that. All right. Did you use that to spread any kind of goodness for him? No. All right. Um, God blesses people in certain ways, and if you don't do it to glorify God, then you automatically will be doing it for the other guy, right? And you built your bed, you're going to have to lay in it. It's, that's what this, this, these passages mean, alright? Um, it's not a joke. You it, And it's also when, also when it says, you know, help the needy, help the poor, it's not just talking about helping people who don't have money. It's talking about helping people who don't are poor in spirit, who don't know God and don't know this stuff. They think that, you know, their money matters and their job promotions matter and 
their degrees matter. I'm not telling you it's bad to have a, you know, God knows you have to have a job, all right? God knows it's not a sin to have a reliable car. But if that's all you're living for, you're in big trouble, all right? Um, that stuff doesn't matter at all, all right, to God. When, after you die, he matters if you accepted Christ. That's the first thing he's going to look at and how you treated other people. Did you tell people? How did, if you've just spent your life, you know, stepping all over people and sh bringing people down to bring yourself up, you are in big trouble, right? Last thing on your deathbed you're going to think about is how much money you have in the bank. I also really wanted to talk about, no, uh, about part seven. None of them can be any by any means redeem his brother nor give to ran God a ransom for him. This is so important. You cannot, there's so many meanings to this. If you are like helping other people, that does, that is still not a ransom for you. All right. You, the only thing that can save you, the ransom was paid by Jesus Christ, not another man. All right. Not another man besides Jesus Christ. So, if you are saving people, like if you're a doctor, I'm not telling you that it's bad to be a doctor. It's good to be a doctor, but don't expect to be because you're saving people's lives and doing good that that kind of good that you are going to get saved without Christ, okay? You cannot work your way into heaven by trying to just save other people. You have to save yourself and you have to rely on Christ, not your good deeds of helping other people. All right? You can even save people from hell. And if you don't actually believe in Jesus Christ, you will still go there. God <laughs> desires obedience more than sacrifices. This is the same concept, but it's so important I have to say it again. Alright. I will not reprove thee of thy sacrifices or of thy burnt offerings to have been continually before me. Uh, I will not. I will take no book out of my house. Nor he goats of my folds. For every beast of the forest is mine. And the cattle upon the th a thousand hills. I know all of the fowls of the mountains. And the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry I would not tell thee. For the world is mine. And the, and the fullness thereof. I will eat the flesh of bulls. Or drink the blood of goats. Okay so what is he talking about? What is God doesn't need... Okay, I'm going to go back into the ancient days. Everybody was doing animal sacrifices. Okay, the pagans, the Egyptians were doing animal sacrifices. The Babylonians were doing animal sacrifices. Every ancient culture was doing animal sacrifices. Why? God said do animal sacrifices too, but he did it to compare and contrast. What's the difference? The difference is... The demonic realm, Satan, those other pa those people who were glorifying the devil and worshiping the devil, the Satan really needs those animals, okay? He actually needs that suffering blood. That's how he, they're parasites. They are parasites, you guys. They, he needs the suffering of innocence, all right? All right? God said to do the animal sacrifices to help you to clean that away all right that clean he used the animal sacrifices he didn't need it if i were hungry i would tell you i don't need these animals they're already mine he says i didn't need if i wanted to eat them i would i'm not i'm not a parasite i don't need this blood for my own nourishment i need you to do these animal sacrifices i need the sacrifice of jesus christ to clean you to help you if you don't want to do it this way then you, if you don't offer any sacrifices then you, then I guess I guess you you will never be clean if you aren't doing it the right the way I say it though it doesn't matter God desires be obedience more than sacrifices again I'm gonna go into a different level of it you have to do what God says more than you working off your bad deeds I'm gonna bring up the Catholic Church again because I just I it's, I just argue with people so all day long. I try not to go on. I mean, in real life, I don't argue on, on the comments because I 
I'm not going to get in a big long argument. You can either believe what I'm saying. Hopefully God or the Holy Spirit will come to you. I'm not going to get in a big long arguments. But I do argue with my family. Because I tell them. They think that I, they show, I show them the Bible passages. Where it says you cannot pray to you know dead people. And you can't, you can't pray to saints. You can't worship angels. It tells you literally. That Jesus literally said not to pray in repetition. To pray on beads. Which is a rosary. But they think that because that if they do the other stuff, other good stuff, it, even if that stuff is bad, it will just counteract the other one, right? You have to do what God says and not work off. There's no deal breaker, okay? There's no making deals with God to do bad stuff, all right? You have to do what he says, not work it off with your good deeds. Does that make sense? All right? He desires obedience more than sacrifices. You gotta listen to what he says. Don't just try to... Make up for your bad deeds by with good deeds. It doesn't work like that. There's not a balance scale like that. The only thing he's going to see is if you're listening to him and you accept Jesus Christ. If you do something bad, you cannot work it off with something good. That's what every other, most other religions teach, okay? They teach as long as you do more good than bad, you will go to heaven. You will go to the uh, some good part, realm, whatever. Alright, there... God says no. Even one sin is never. Even if you do one sin, you do your rest of your life doing good deeds. It'll never be enough. The only thing that's good enough is the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. That's the only thing. Your own sacrifices won't mean anything without Christ. All right. You cannot. You cannot say, "Well, I'm going to do one Our Father for every ten Hail Marys." That one Our Father is going to counteract all the ten Marys that God. That you are not supposed to be saying anyway. No, it doesn't. One good thing doesn't counteract all the bad things. Okay, never. It doesn't work like that. Oh, this is a this is a classic. Uh, his words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His his words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. I'm gonna talk about this double-edged sword in another video. Okay, how he. Anyway, how Satan lies from both sides of his mouth. Anyway, this is talking about Satan, but it's also talking about you telling yourself things or hearing things from other people to discredit God. And it makes sense. His his mouth, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter. The Satan's excuses for getting you to sin or tricking you to sin are so, they sound, they make so much sense to us. They make perfect sense to us. They sound like a good idea. When Satan tricked Eve into biting the apple, first of all, Satan cannot force you to sin. All right, but he can guide you to do it. All right, and you do it. You telling yourself, making up excuses to do it yourself is the same thing. All right, this is not just about you, Satan. Satan whispering things. Are you telling yourself? All right, so. Satan has completely tricked everyone to do the exact opposite of the, what the Bible says to do. And it makes sense to us. Because it, the, his, his, the way he lies is just so perfect. Satan is a good liar because he mixes the truth up with lies. Okay? Alright? He mixes the truth up with lies. That's how it makes him a good liar. His excuses, his reasoning makes so much sense. All right, he'll just trick you to do the dumbest things, and it makes sense to you. And you're not realizing you're just doing something so dumb. I will give you a few examples of how stupid we are, and I want you to really think about it because it's funny, I, and it literally is funny to the, those demons and Satan. They are literally laughing at us because we are convinced of the dumbest things. First of all, he has most of the world convinced that they're part monkey. Through evolution, and they have some other parts of the people who will convince their part mantis beings or aliens. I'm a man, so you're a mantis and you're an alien. A, uh, so you're a mantis and you're a, a monkey? <laughs> they're literally laughing at this. He's like, Look, I'm gonna go convince them that they're all monkeys. No, you're not a monkey, alright? And now I'm gonna go convince them that they're part mantis. Watch this. <laughs> Every, him and his demons are just laughing your butt off. 
And now I'm gonna convince them that they're not a boy or a girl. Look, you're not a boy. You're you're so you're not a, so you're a monkey and you're a mantis and you're not a boy or a girl. And you just believe it. It makes sense. Like okay, all right. Yeah, I'm a mantis. I'm not a boy. I'm not a girl. I'm a I'm a I, I'm a this. I'm the total opposite thing. I am. I've obviously have to just look in the mirror. I look in the mirror. Are you a mantis? Look in the mirror. Are you a monkey? Look in the mirror. Are you a boy or a girl? Daddy, it's that easy. But somehow he's convinced you of the exact opposite. Another thing is. All right, so I'm gonna talk. To, I said this in a previous video, but I'm gonna say it again. I want you to really think about how stupid this is. How can every uh, every religion on the world be okay and true? The devil said the devil has convinced everyone that you know what? It's okay. It doesn't matter what religion you believe in. You're gonna be okay. It, it's all. It's all just. It doesn't matter. How? Okay, so think of how dumb that is. Okay, only one thing is gonna happen to every single person. When they die. Only one thing. Okay. Are some people going to get reincarnated? And some people going to get. Um, go to sleep forever. And some people. They are going to go to hell. One, some people are going to go to heaven. Some people are going to go to purgatory. Some people are going to go to Sheol. Alright. Only, what, what, only one thing is going to happen to every single person. So why are 10,000 religious beliefs and afterlifes okay? the truth okay <laughs> believing that every all the religions are equal and they're all okay just it doesn't really matter which one you pick that is so dumb that doesn't even make sense only one afterlife is going to happen to every single person it's the bible's version of the afterlife you are not going to go to sleep forever you are not going to go to sleep forever there are so many false religions that teach oh there's hell but it's not that bad don't worry <laughs> right oh it's not that bad you're only going to be there for a little while or it's only temporary, which is kind of just like purgatory. Well, only one, there's only one answer to that. So why is it that it's okay just you, for you to believe in any religion? It doesn't matter. It's okay. Just pick one. It's all right. No, that doesn't even make sense. It literally doesn't make sense because only one thing is going to happen to every single person when you die. So you better figure out which one it is, what the truth is. Also, when it says his words were smoother than butter and softer than oil... His lies, the devil's lies, and each other's lies, and telling yourself things, it's, you know, it, it, it feels good. It, 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 um, he tells us things that we want to hear. Things that we want to hear, even though they are lies, okay? They may, he tells us things that, that feel, make us feel good, okay? We want to hear that you can sin all, all, you can do whatever you want your whole life, and you'll go right to heaven. All right, you can do it. God loves me. I can do whatever I want. I'll go to heaven. That sounds good, but it's not true. Okay. Uh, don't worry about it. You know, only really bad people go to hell. Don't not you. You're a good person. You pay your taxes and you go to work all day and you just you know you have a little beer on the weekend or whatever. That's not that bad. You'll be all right. You're not. You're not as bad as Hitler, so you're gonna go to heaven. All right. That sounds good. Like I'm not Hitler, so I get to go to heaven. No. Okay. You're to compo You're. You have to do what God says, not what not what everyone else tells you and what you tell yourself, because people are just they want to believe whatever they want to. Okay. They listen to what sounds good instead of listening to the truth. Um. I guess I said this before, and I'll say it again. The reason why this God. Why Jesus Christ and the Bible is the least popular amongst today because it is very strict. Because God tells you if you do this and this and this, you will go to hell. And people don't want to hear it, so they just believe whatever they want. He didn't tell you these things because he hates you. He tells you these things because he loves you. He doesn't want you to go there, but you will go. God does love you, but you have to follow the rules or you will go. The rule is, the one rule is you have to accept Jesus Christ. That's the rule, all right? And you, and you can't have both. You can't say, well, I accept Jesus Christ, but I also am going to be, you know, I'm going to watch porn and all that stuff. You can't have both. You have, you have to do what the Bible says, okay? You stop listening to other people. 
stop listening to yourself and start listening to God. It's not going to sound like what you, like you want to hear at first, but you realize that it's the truth and it actually is helping you. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born, speaking lies. Alright, so this... This has everyone backwards, okay? It, it, the devil has convinced everyone that this is backwards. When you are born, you are practically already promised to the devil, okay? You are already born into a curse. That is how you have to think about it. I'm not talking about when infants die. When infants or children under the age of understanding die, they go to heaven, yes. Okay? But the devil has it convinced, has everyone and, and everyone else, you telling everyone else this too, that if you, you're basically just going to go to heaven and you just have to do a bunch of bad things to go to hell. And then as long as you avoid those bad things, you're good. No. You are already promised to the devil unless you accept Jesus Christ. That's what you have to do, okay? It's not the other way around. Everyone thinks it's the other way around. Everyone thinks that you are born innocent and you stay innocent. As long as you don't do a bunch of horrible things, you're good. Nope, you already you are born wicked, alright? You are born with wickedness in you. And you have to... No one is born saved. Not one single person is born saved. They do you have to teach kids to lie? Do you have to teach kids to to hit each other? No, they naturally start doing it, right? That's weird, right? You have to correct them. And you have to really show them who Christ is if you want to be a good parent. Right? You yeah. And the devil has that the other one. He has, he has it convinced the other way around. All right, you are born unsaved. Not one person is born saved. And while I'm on it, I'm going to use that same logic. Um, if God is not going to hold infants and babies under the age of understanding, which is not a specific age, it just depends. Okay, it depends on the actual in, uh, person. Um. The, if you you have to consciously accept Christ, okay, to be saved. If you are not conscious, all right, if you're not conscious of your surroundings, God is obviously not going to hold you responsible. Infants, if there's an, a horrible accident, they go, they go, their spirits go to heaven, their souls go to heaven. Use that same logic for infant baptism, all right. You have to consciously accept Jesus to be saved. All right. So infants who can cannot no, do not know what's going on, you baptize them and now they're saved. No, this is the devil tricking you again. It literally does that. It literally does infant baptism is not biblical. It's not in the Bible, and it is the devil tricking you into thinking that you are you are saved when you're not. Okay, you're doing something that's good when it doesn't matter. All right, he's it's a false conversion. It's a false sense of security like okay, well, I was baptized as an infant, so I'm good now. Infant baptism makes no sense and it's not in the Bible. Adult baptism is in the Bible, all right? Cuz you can consciously say, "Yes, I accept I uh, I accept Jesus Christ. I accept the Spirit. I want to be baptized." That's in the Bible, but not infant baptism. Psalm 62. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to that rock that is higher than I. Up that rock, get it? For thou hast been a shelter for me, and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the cover of thy wings. So, Psalm 61, if you read it, it says... I cry unto thee, and, and when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me up to thy rock that is higher than me. So this is you at the bottom of the hill that Jesus Christ died on, okay? It's the kingdom of God. It's supposed to represent the kingdom of God. You're at the bottom of it, and you haven't climbed up yet, all right? And you are going to climb up. You're going to meet him in the clouds, all right? You're supposed to meet him in the clouds. You have to climb up the hill, though. He's not just going to take you up for doing nothing. 
all right you have to pray you have to read the bible and you have to preach the word of god you can't just say why well, i, I want to go to heaven and so there he's just going to take you to heaven all right i will abide in thy tabernacle forever i will trust in the cover of thy wings you're supposed to climb up there and then take refuge under his wings which is under the wings of the cross okay you're supposed to be one of these many many soldiers following christ up that hill and when you get up there it's going to be tough but you have to take refuge under the under the, his protection just like the psalm 61 says yes i know this is talking about the people will say this is talking about the wings and the cherubs on the top of the ark of the covenant but again this is layered meaning and the hidden gold is that this is the true meaning all right this is the true meaning behind these passages you have to the, these passages aren't just about king david talking about his personal life it is that's not a lie but the hidden gold the riddle is that this is what these passages are really about did you find the hidden gold or did you just think this was about king david so that's the riddle here that's the hidden gold so you're supposed to meet him up in the clouds and you're supposed to climb up that hill all right and the book of revelation says you're supposed to meet him in the clouds right and you're supposed to fight your way up that hill is it going to be hard is there going to be like christ on your way up is there going to be lots of people mocking you and tearing out your beard and spitting in your face yes people do not like to hear the truth they like to hear what they want to hear but you have to do it so in, in hopes that they do hear you all right it's it's gonna be a hard long battle but it'll be worth it in the end you can take refuge under his wings under christ's wings so um please think about this guys and i will continue my book of psalms in another video thank you